Hello, my name's Rowena Birch. When I was competing, I was Rowena Sweetman. Yes, I've got Sweetman written on the back of my jacket. When you've won the European Championships, you're entitled to have your name in green letters on the back of your judo suit. And in 1994, I won the European Championships. I also competed in the Olympic Games in 1996 in Atlanta, and it was one of the best experiences of my life. Definitely worth all the work that went into getting there. I'm just going to show a few of my strangles. I'd say the majority of my wins were on the ground, in, um, and my speciality was strangles. I loved a strangle because there's no argument. It's either on or off. It's not down to the referee. If the referee doesn't call it, they go unconscious, so you can know if you've got it right. Helping me today, Simon Calderbank, who's recently, or well, more recently, found judo in his life, and he's enjoying it. So, first one I'm going to do with you is, we call it the slippery snake strangle. Um, there's three key things to remember as strangles. First one that makes it work is the transition. Normally, getting your hands in fast from standing to groundwork, that's when the opportunity is. The second thing to remember is where's your body weight. Get your body weight so it's working against the neck. The neck's quite weak compared to all your body weight, and that way you're not relying on muscles in your arms. And the third one, third point to remember is keep it on. Believe that it's going to work. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time for the strangle to go on, and too often people give up even though they're in the right place for it. They just need to give it a little bit of time. So, this first strangle, take it from standing to groundwork. For example, don't you go, it hasn't quite worked. First thing to do, get in really quickly, up high. So I'm positioning my body weight. I'm also got my hand in, ready, nicely through the back of the neck. Hand in your own sleeve, and it just comes across there. Sit you up, Simon, so you can see. Round here, it's literally just a bar across the back of the neck there. Go back down. What you often find is you need to get in really tight and disguise it a little bit. Let them think you're doing something else. You might mess with the legs a bit so that when you're actually ready, their neck is already open. And they're looking up, looking for the referee to call Mate. And that's when you whack it in. Get your arm across and then lean into it. This bottom arm I'm trying to get against the mat. And the top arm does itself. There. The time I remember doing that, that strangling competition was in the Paris tournament in 1992. It was the first time I was fighting under 66 kilograms. And I came up against my idol in many respects, Manuela Pirantosi, who was world champion at that time. And it was literally like that. We went down on the ground, I did a bit of an Ojigari that didn't score, and suddenly her neck was there, the opportunity was there, and I put the strangle on. She didn't tap, she went unconscious, and it was a, a definite win for me. Um, but it was, a, in a way, it was a, a life-changing win, because it meant that I then believed that I could beat the top in the world. And, and that gave me the confidence to then commit fully to try and get to the Olympic Games. Okay, strangle number two. This one's really good for someone, you've got someone who's attacked you and they've fallen on all falls in front of you, and how to make the best use of that opportunity using your hands where they already are. Make sure you get off the throw first. Pull your weight through, weight on the top, work your way around. Key for this one is patience and believing it's going to work. Again, I remember using it in a competition and one of the national coaches, the men's national coach at the time, Tony McConnell, I could hear him saying, it's on, keep going, keep going, keep going. It felt like forever, in the end she did tap. Simplify it again. Key points from here. Give a bit of a pull to get it as tight as you can on the neck. And then come in. Hips and forward, my weight, that weight thing again, it's all on the neck, it's not back here. Right forward on the neck, step through, 
hold the leg so that they can't turn with it and get out of it. Just hold it for a moment there, and then you can just keep moving around, and as you go around, it puts the strangle on further. If they do manage to shift around a little bit, um, if you just go around a little bit more, you want to shift around that way. One way to try and get off it is to keep moving around. Go around with them, and it puts the strangle on. So if you couldn't see what was happening on the, um, you go on all fronts, just sit up a minute like that. All that was happening underneath was when they landed, my, hand, my arm was already here from the throw. So you just pull it on, leave it exactly where it is, and come on over the top with your weight, and then move through and round. Do one more. Good pull, pulling forward, weight on it, control the back, and you're there. Okay, strangle number three. This was the one I won the most contests with. It wasn't always the strangle that won, sometimes it's a hold down, so it's a combination of a turnover with the help of a strangle. So again, it's that moment when they land. From standing to ground, with probably from you doing a throw that hasn't quite worked, or them doing an attack. When they turn onto all fours, get your hands in as quick as you can. Okay? Right, so I'll break that down a little bit. If you just go on all fours now from here, turn around a little bit. Okay, when they land, I'm looking to get my hands in as quickly as I can while they're still all open from just having landed. You want to get your hands as close together so they're touching. It's fingers in, not thumbs in, fingers in. So both grips, I've got my fingers in. Like that, and they're touching. Next thing's the body weight again. So I'm looking to get all my weight pushing that direction. So I'm taking this, this is sort of taking away the pressure of it using his arm. It's on his neck. To stop the strangle going on, they tend to roll over. So I'm really leaning forward to take them over that front pin. There. Use your own body weight to step over. And that takes it into a hold down stroke strangle. So the strangle's on, but if they're pinned on the, so if they're pinned on the back, that's also a hold down. Or rather, it was a hold down. Um, in judo, international judo, depending when you're watching this video, they keep changing the rules for the hold downs. When I was competing, that was allowed. Now, they don't like it, you having both your legs underneath the person you're holding, and it doesn't count. So there's a little adjustment that I've added to it. So a little bit. So you're here. Pull forward, tip them. Step over the first leg like you did before, but the second leg, this one, rather than going underneath the neck, you're just going to bring it round the top and sit through with it here. So you're then into more of a hold down, you can then turn it into like a tati shuga tummy. Sometimes you can just sit with it here, and you've got all your weight on them, it's quite a hard, strong hold down. Or you might even decide, forget the strength this time, we'll just go for the hold down. But it's a very strong turnover, and even if the strangle's not quite on, it's normally enough to push them to turn over. I'm not sure if you could see what I'm doing with my arms. Just sit up a little bit more. With your arms, you're doing a kind of scissor action. So you're putting the pressure in it very much. You have strong wrists, through your wrists, getting tight together like that. And that puts the pressure on the neck. So here, this arm's going down. And that one's just squeezing in together, so you're trying to get your elbows, elbows touching, if possible. Good shove forward helps my knee there. Step over. Bring your head, leg round. Got a hold now. You can go into that as you could tell. So that's three strangles. Key to the strangle, get your hands in fast, put your body weight on to help with the pressure rather than relying on strengthening your arms. Third point, 
Keep going, keep going till don't give up on your strangle too quickly. Because quite often it's on even when you don't realise it's on. So if you enjoy that and want to do some judo, if you're based around Manchester, look up Manchester Judo Club. If you're looking in another part of Britain, or another part, particularly in Great Britain, have a look on the British Judo website. Um, and there's a, you can look on there to find a judo club that's close to you. Thank you.